Hello, I'm Marcus my garage. Today we're going to be taking a look at the scrutineering process for racing in the UK. Now if you've only just started racing you may never have had your car scrutineered before so I'm going to run through a few checks now that you can do at home so you can make sure that your car is ready for the track. I'd like to start off by saying I'm not a, I'm not a scrutineer by any means, I'm just going through the process of the jobs I would do on my car before uh, before taking it to the circuit. Usually it's around about a sort of 10-15 minute safety check and I'm going to put a little list in the side, in, in, in the sort of section below, that will show you the things that I that I work through. I'd also like to say a, a sort of a thank you to all the scrutineers. I know it's a, it's, a, it's a bit of a thankless task that they do, and I think at the end of the day, they all want us to race. I don't think it's a case of scrutineers what, what you know they don't want to let you out on track, or to, they've got to put their name on your car to say they passed it for safety. And I think in that, in that respect, you know, you need to sort of listen to what they say and make sure that your your car conforms conforms to the standards. So the car I'll be going around is obviously going to be my MGB. I think for sort of most sort of clubman racing in the UK, the rules are going to be are going to be pretty similar. A lot of the things that would, would transfer transfer across any race car, and most of them are to do with safety. I should say that the, the eligibility scrutineering and safety scrutineering are two different things. The eligibility scrutineering is usually, that's usually done by your sort of series organizer or the championship organizer, and that's not the same as the scrutineering that takes place at the racetrack. So let's get started, and we'll see uh, we'll see the bits I'd like to go over. So we'll check our headlights tail lights, brake lights and rain light. We'll also check the wipers are working and often the screw will ask you to leave the lights and the wipers going and then pull the electric cut off there to make sure that everything stops when it should. And you'll be able to see there that the cable the cable has pulled up the uh, the cutoff switch there and that's isolated the battery. I think this is one of the most common failures I see, I see in scrutineering the problem being that these uh, these cables can get stiff. If, they, if you sort of if you uh, leave the car outside that sort of thing, I think water can get in and that that just seizes the cable up. So what I like to do is every every so often I like to just pour a little bit of oil down in there and just sort of work the cable to make sure that it that it stays nice and lubricated. Alongside the electrical cutoff, we've got the fire extinguisher on here. Now that just that just pulls up a little bit. You'll be able to see inside the car. What I've, what I've got on the extinguisher is actually two little, two little springs so that the scrutineer can actually see, let me just see if I can get that, see that, 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 that the cable, cable is, is working freely. Your fire extinguisher should be, should be fully charged and then securely attached to the, uh, to the floor of the car. The pull cables are something I have been, uh, I have been picked up for before on, on my car. The screws here did sort of say, well, you know, they're in the middle of the car here, so they wouldn't be all that, all that easy to get to if the if the car was on its roof. I think they tend to prefer them at, at the at the side of the, side of the screen, somewhere around here. You'll see that I've put in my notes about the battery being charged. I mean, this is more more for your, for yourself than a screw today. They may ask you to start the car. At the uh, at the scrutineering bay, so it's useful to make sure you've got enough juice. First of all, to to start the car, and also to show the lights and everything else working. It's essential in your race car to make sure that, that your wheels are correctly torqued. Um, obviously, this should be a, a, a matter of course anyway. Um, there's certainly no advantage to to running with loose wheels. Used in scrutineering, the scrutineer will sort of give the give the seat. I'm in the way of the camera a bit. Give the seat a really good shake and make sure that that's firmly anchored to the car. If that moves at all, you probably you, you probably will fail scrutineering. Another sort of you think is a fairly obvious one. Belts need to be in date. So this is let's turn that around. So that's uh, there we go. Hopefully you get that to focus. So so that's valid valid until 2024. Also the same with the seat. Hopefully you'll be able to see there the. Seat is also dated 2024. A little bit of a contentious issue in, in some of the classic racing because you are allowed a period specification seat, so you, you can essentially have a non-dated seat. But equally, if you have a, a seat like this that is dated and it's expired, then that won't be eligible for the uh, for the seat belt harnesses. You'll see you've got the sort of proper 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 links for them there, and you've got these these are sort of these are on the car already. For the other ones, you've got a you've got a square pad welded into the floor from the underside. They will be possibly looking at those to make sure that they've been. Uh, They've been installed correctly. Just show you the other side. You can see, see how the head, see how the seat seat belt clips in there. It has a sort of a spring fitting, and now we're just making sure that all those are all those are installed correctly. 
other thing that Scrutineers do like is having these, uh, having, having your sort of your seat belt bar, the same height as where your where, where where the belt would come through the seat. I think it's quite dangerous if you have a bar down here and then the belt angles up at quite an, you know quite a steep angle. I think if you have an accident, there's a, there's a good chance of that sort of pulling you pulling you down quite 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 severely and hurting your neck. So that's just another thing to uh, to consider when you're sort of specifying the roll cage for the car. The roll cage is another part of, of the car that they're likely to check over. I mean, this one was was installed professionally, so I, I've, I've never had any issues with it. It tends to be if you've got a, a few bad welds or, or anything similar, that can get picked up. If you're racing in Europe, they do like this. Uh, this is sort of a hard foam. It's fireproof foam, just around sort of where your, where your helmet might might come into contact with a roll cage. They, they are very strict on that for the overseas races. If you're filming in the car, it's very useful to have a sort of a, a little lanyard around your camera. So when this when this is up in the car, that just clips around a roll cage like that. It then screws screws into it into its mount. But also, if that mount fails for any reason, the camera will drop down and it won't be banging around in the car, distracting you and, and causing an accident. And I think if you are running cameras in the car, they'd like to have them. They'd like to see them installed for scrutineering, so they can uh, so they can check them over. Also in the interior of the car, they will probably like to look at your fuel lines. In my, in my case, they run, they run through the vehicle. You'll see I've got a jig fitting and the correct bulkhead fitting up there. There's a fire extinguisher lines there. And then the other thing just to make sure of is that if you've got any sort of holes in the bulkhead, you'll see there, um, and that's for the, for where the steering would go in a left hand, left hand drive MGB. You just got a rubber cover on there so that everything's, uh, everything's sort of insulated the way it should be. Just here is a removable steering wheel. Not really a problem for screw steering, but I do notice that if you ever get out of your car at all, they like you to put the steering wheel back in, just in case it needs to be moved anyway. So moving down as we come to the towing line next. Now for me, this has been a bit of a bit of a contentious issue. You can see here, I've got a I've got a towing line painted white that's protruding a little bit from the front of the car. And having this having this flat front on the on the vehicle here means that the towing line sort of sticks out a long way from from the front of the car. Originally, I had a towing eye like this because they want to. They really wanted it, the uh, MSA wanted a 60mm ring and when that was here the screw steer didn't particularly like it because it, it obviously stuck out quite a long way. So then I went for a uh, for a cloth type towing, now, this one came from Willens, so especially for historic race, this was just loops, looped around the frame inside the car. The screw steer didn't like this because it's a bit a bit on the thin side. So then I went for a, uh, I went for this type which is, I think it's, it's, it's sort of the, the, the most approved one that I've used, so this is a, a sort of fairly thick Thick fabric one, but the problem was because this this, this front valance is aluminium. I, I was recovered one day by by the by the tow truck at the circuit, and when they pulled the car out, the, the tow truck was pointing pointing the other way to, to the car, and so it just wrenched it wrenched the whole uh, the whole front valance off the vehicle. Um, so now I've gone back I've gone back to this style. So it's a slightly more compact um, metal metal towing eye. So far, I've sort of I seem to have got away with it, even though that the middle ring is a little bit smaller than it should be. The other thing that has been mentioned is to have a is to have have a toe a toe sticker or an arrow paint, um, pointing towards this uh, this towing eye, because it sort of it stands out pretty well from a the car. They they seem to have let that let that go for now though. Alongside the front towing eye, we also have the rear one here. This is just exactly the same design. Not quite such a difficulty with this one because it doesn't stick out stick out from the car quite so much. But I do prefer the metal ones over the uh, over the fabric. It's a full aluminium skin. This rear valance here, and I would be uh, I'd be very disappointed if that got uh, if that got damaged. Another point that has been raised with me regarding the the headlights is having some sort of tape tape across them. Um, on my car they seem to let that slide because I had uh, I had these sort of pl plastic covers over the top. The other thing I could do is possibly put a bit of clear tape on there um, just to sort of satisfy the scrutineers in the future. So now we can have a look under the bonnet. I think it's important to sort of you know to take care of your car where you can. I think if your car looks like it's just sort of just been dragged out of a hedge or just been dragged off the trailer not looked over not looked over at all since winter um, then I think the scrutineer is going to be a little bit more the scrutiny probably is going to go over that car a little bit a little bit more thoroughly um, i'm not saying the car has to be immaculate by any means but you know just an hour an hour or so between the races is all you need really just to sort of uh, just to give it a sort of a very brief check over and to get the get the, get the basics done so on the on the list we've got the controls slack and operating okay this usually refers to sort of the carburetor obviously not the same if you've got a fuel injection so they like to see i think they like to see two throttle return springs and sort of know you know, obviously a little bit of slack in the cable there, but uh, nothing sort of dangling around, nothing that's going to get caught caught in the engine bay anywhere. Um, 
obviously you can see got some loose wires here so that wouldn't be good but I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to start the car without those it's just a sort of case of making sure you've got no no sort of bare wires anywhere these are all the um, the oil cooler hoses they all want to be braided and the same for the uh, for the oil pressure hose there that's going to the car so yeah. screws in here we'll probably want to look at your uh, brake brake and clutch clutch fluid levels this is quite easy in here because it's a it's a clear case now I don't actually fill my fill my brake fluid to the top I tend to leave it on the minimum just to stop it vaporizing too much I think the screws in here would also be interested to sort of look down underneath the car to make sure that you've got no sort of fluid no oil leaks uh, no antifreeze or, or coolant leaks so just make sure things like the radiator cap are all done up nicely all these are nice and tight and have a quick look under the car as well whether you'll be able to see or not just to make sure see there's a little drop of oil there that's come out of the gearbox i think but just try and make sure there's sort of no no major leaks so moving around to the back of the car, they'd like to see a that's an in-date in -date fuel tank. Obviously this one's an aluminium box, so it doesn't it's, it's not dated. But if you've got the bag type tank, a little bit safer. And also they are they are only dated for sort of five years. So you can see around the filler cap here, we've got a, this is a removable drip tray that I've put in when I'm refueling. They'd also like to check the uh, things like the uh, the caps are all tight on these, all the, all these are, all are, all the hoses are good with no uh, with no damage. Another thing, make sure you don't leave leave anything in the boot of the car that's going to rattle around. The same with the interior. Obviously, doing a race with this banging about isn't going to be a, isn't going to be very good. Also, on the car, you should try and make sure your windscreen is largely chip free. I think you can see on mine. There's a couple of little small ones here, but I've I've sort of gone past the point of changing it every season. It just gets it gets too expensive, and unfortunately, it's, uh, it's it seems to be one of the pitfalls of racing. I think the, the shorter I've, I've ever had a screen last is 20 minutes, and that was a brand new screen in the first practice session of the day. Another thing, especially for MGBs, is uh, make sure your hard top is, is is sort of held down well. I've seen more than one of these uh, come flying off. The same sort of goes for other cars. If you've got any loose panels at all, there's a good chance they will fail you on scrutineering. So now let's so now let's take a look at helmet gloves and sort of general protective equipment. I think it's nice, you know, when I when I do take the car scrutiny, I tend to lay out the sort of things like the helmet, hands device and gloves and the overalls all on the floor in the car, so they're all, all sort of very easy to see. Makes that life a little bit easier for the scrutineer. So let's start off with the with the crash helmet. This is an SA2010 helmet. I think obviously the time of this video, this is February. 2022 I think this has got another year or so left on it I think it expires the end of 2023 I would say it's very important make sure your helmet is in date and, and when you're when you when, when you're purchasing the helmet for the first time so sort of make sure you know that it has got a good few years on it um, usually the sort of the dates and bits are on the inside here I think this is I don't know if you'll be able to see or not that says SA SA 2010 in there it's also important if you're racing in the UK to have have one of these stickers on the scrutineer will usually do that sort of the first time you present present the, 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 your your crash helmet to him next we've got the hands device again this has got the little the little sticker on it um, to show that it's let me get that zoomed in for you so, that, so that's been approved for most sport in the uk on this one i've got the sliding tellers again these are these are all, all, all sort of standardized you've got the one on there and also the one the one on here i think sometimes Sometimes people like to sort of present the helmet and the hands device together to show that the clips, the clips sort of are, are, are all working. Um, I don't tend to do that purely because I put everything on in the in the car, and so I would just uh, I would just sort of put put the two separately. And we have the gloves here. So again, these are these are FIA dated. You'll see on there it's uh, 8856 2000, which I think is the, is the current racing and also it hasn't got any expiry date yet. So that, these should be good for a few years. You also see they've got a date of, date of manufacture on them. When they, do, when they do your scrutiny in, they will be checking your gloves to make sure you've got sort of no holes in them, checking on the seams. The same with the crash helmet. If you've got any sort of big cracks or, or sort of large, large chips out of that, they, they, they may well fail you. So it's just important to make sure all these things are sort of looked after well both in the car and away from it as well let's take let's take a quick look at the boots so generally on these it's going to be making sure there's no uh, there's no sort of holes along the seams don't think they really worry too much about the tread on the sole as long as you haven't got a, got a hole in it they do tend to wear around the backs which is sort of a, a, a understandable um, again most importantly is the date so we've got the same here 8856 2000 for fia and also an fia SFI rating as well, which I think is the American standard. Same with this, same with this shoe. Obviously, that they, they, they make a pair, and equally, we just got to make sure there's no sort of damage, damage to the leather, or sort of any, any cuts that, that that have got that have gone through the lining. Now, the underclothing should all be all be in date. On the socks, we've got these little tags, very sort of not particularly well held on, so you've got to be careful they don't fall off. So these are again eight 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 five six two thousand. 
we've got our sort of the, uh, the jersey top here um, now this unfortunately has got a little hole in it so that, that may that may fail scrutineering there if you can just see just see that and then you've got the uh, obviously the the approval and also the uh, the, the hologram as well we've got the uh, long johns here so very similar to the top with the uh, now they've got, they've got the approval at the, at the, uh, the sort of around, around the waistband area there so date of manufacture and also the uh, the FIA hologram we've also got the uh, balaclava here so again, these are all from the sort of same Sparco range. Um, you've got the, uh, the certificate and also and also the hologram. I think it's a good idea when you're sort of checking your checking your sort of the, the, these garments to so go around the seam. Um, these these Sparco ones, that, well, you know, they're, they're nice and lightweight. They're, they're, they're nice and cool, but they are unfortunately very thin, and they do get damaged. They do get damaged fairly easily, unfortunately. The scrutiny will also would probably like to look at your race suit. They'll be checking checking this sort of certification on the back there. And also the uh, the hologram that's uh, that's down inside. This is on the, the, the sort of lower half of the front of the front zip there. Um, always a sort of good idea. Check the inside for any damage. Usually, sort of around the around the armpit area is, is, is a common place that they, they might get damaged. Across the back, where they, where you're sort of stretching across your shoulders, and usually sort of in the sort of under leg area, in the sort of the crotch area, and and, and sort of the back. The back here can often get sort of damaged, damaged in the car by the pedals or, or, or anything, anything in the vehicle. They'll also probably want to check that your, your badges have been sewn on correctly. These are Sparco ones from the factory and I'm a little bit surprised because they have gone, they have sewn through the, the, the whole thing now and I didn't think you were, you were meant to do that but I guess that's the proper Nomex thread. I think if you're doing your badges yourself they'd like to have them so they're just um they're just sort of through this outside skin only not through the uh not through the sort of inside one as well so you have to be very careful when you uh when you stitch in so that concludes the scrutineering video i can't say the list is everything that you might encounter when scrutineering but it should give you a fair idea of the sort of basics that's very easy to check at home and also well worth doing before you get to the race meeting giving you plenty of time to fix them it's very hard when you're sort of you turn up for scrutineering it's an hour to you qualify and you've got a whole list of things to do on the car really not what you want to be doing at the side of the circuit also if there's anything in this video you think i've missed that you, that you think it's sort of, is, is valid for scrutineering do let me know and i can put that in the text below as it stands i'm just about ready for the first race of the season this is the the 19th of March at, at Brands Hatch so um, I'm looking forward to that and uh, hopefully you'll join me in the video there many thanks bye